after doing thousands, in fact, over 9,000 different lab tests on my ADHD patients, this is what I discovered and learned. In fact, the very last one is something that surprised me the most. So you definitely want to stick around on these new discoveries. And what I want to share with you is after, like I said, running thousands of different lab tests on my ADHD patients, the thing that I found, and I want you to put in the chat to think, uh, to see what you think the percentage is here. So when it comes to serotonin, a lot of people with HD do suffer with this, but I want you guys to put in the chat, what do you think from the tests that I've run, what percentage of people with ADHD deal with low serotonin? So it's actually from running all these different tests, it's 66% of my patients had low serotonin levels. Now, why is this important? Because serotonin has a lot to do with motivation. So if you're struggling with motivation, but also you're feeling also really depressed, there's a very high likely chance that you might have that percentage of deficiency going on with you. And it is something that needs to be addressed because it might not be a per se dopamine, like a lot of people think uh, it might be, or other things when it comes to ADC. But serotonin definitely plays a big role from my experience running these different lab tests. But on the other side, also, we could be dealing with spiked serotonin. So too high. This is what we call a serotonin syndrome. And when it came to the percentage of people that after running these tests with each patient and looking over all the lab work that we've done, what we found as far as across the board is that 20% of people with ADHD, at least the ones that I worked with into these tests, had elevated serotonin levels. Now, what does this mean? When you have elevated serotonin levels, it usually will cause agitation, um, increased stress. I mean, hallucinations can be an issue. I've seen it before firsthand. And it's not a good situation to have elevated serotonin levels. It's also hard to focus and be productive because your levels are spiked. Now, some other really fascinating things I also found out about is also GABA. But not just GABA, but also glutamate and glycine. All three of these also play a big role when it comes to ADHD. And what I found as far as the percentage that were suffering with low GABA levels was 38%. So still pretty high number. 38% of my patients running all these different labs had low GABA levels. Now, it's also, I want to kind of point out to this graph, there's also a couple other key factors when it comes to making GABA. And that is uh, glutamine. And so glutamine, there was an 18% reduction across the board. And then as far as um, glycine, which is another one that's really important for helping with the production. And that was glycine was 30%. So pretty significant. And this is why it's so important to do investigate lab work to see, okay, what is it truly that you're deficient in to address this? Now, why is GABA so important? Because GABA helps with our mood regulation, helps with managing our stress. And people with ADHD suffer a lot with, with anxiety, stress, because of the things that they suffer with their ADHD symptoms. And this is why it's so critical to look at different things of what is specifically the issue. Okay. Now, another one. We have a lot to cover here. Also, there's quite a bit of a percentage of people that dealt with spiked GABA levels. Now, when you're elevated, have elevated GABA levels, it also can contribute to high anxiety, stress, agitation, just like when you have elevated serotonin levels. So in this case, what I found with running all these different labs, over 9,000 different labs, is it was 28%, 28% that had spiked, like the patients that I ran the, these tests on, 28% tend to have elevated GABA levels. Now, typically, how we lower this down is usually typically L-theanine and rhodiol and some other things to help lower this. And then more importantly is stress management techniques that will usually work with our patients and clients to help with that, to lower these levels. Now, another one that's probably that you don't recognize or don't think of too much about is histamine and taurine. So both histamine and taurine are important for several different neurotransmitters um, to help build and modulate. And histamine, in fact, that one would pretty surprise me of how low people were in histamine levels. And it was 
Now, taurine, taurine is also a very important amino acid. That one, it was 32% were low and deficient in this. Okay, so pretty significant uh, if you think about it is that you probably have very high chance, especially with low histamine levels. And why that's important is because it's a driver that helps build and modulate all these different neurotransmitters. So it's important to have a good adequate amount. And we'll usually use L-histidine when someone is low in histamine levels. And then obviously we'll supplement taurine if we see these are low. Okay. Now, another big one. This is where I found this probably the most surprising well, actually, no, there's, there's still a lot. There's a lot of surprising things here is phenylethylamine. If you see it, it's an excitatory neurotransmitter that is at the very beginning of the dopamine pathway. So it's pretty important because this could be the culprit to a lot of your ADC symptoms, such as lack of motivation, focus, drive, you're suffering with those things and even uh, memory issues too that I've seen. What I found is when we, I running these tests, it was 90%, 90%. So there's a very, if you're watching this and you have ADHD, there's a very likely, high likely chance that you are dealing with low PEA levels, phenylethylamine levels. So typically I'll recommend either straight up PEA. So phenylethylamine or DL phenylalanine, which is the amino acids. that um, specifically helps build PEA. It also helps build tyrosine. It actually helps makes tyrosine. So that was the other thing. So also, the percentage of people who deal with tyrosine, it's not as high. That's why we should put more emphasis on this. I just see a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of things talking about tyrosine. Don't get me wrong. I do see it's deficient, but it's not as high as phenylethylamine levels. And it is 52% across the board, running all these different tests with my patients. I found across the board, on average, about 52% of people were low in tyrosine. Okay. Now, this other one, this is where it really surprised me. But in a way, it made sense. Is both norepinephrine and epinephrine have a lot to deal with managing stress. Okay. It's the breakdown of dopamine. And if these are low, it's very hard to manage stress and can impact your focus and drive significantly. And when it came to norepinephrine, it was 60% were low in this when running these tests. However, epinephrine, this is what really surprised me, is 99% of people with ADHD, because I, I get mine is a very uh, selective group, and these are adults with ADHD or have ADHD symptoms. Not all of them had the diagnosis, but they had the symptoms. But 99% of people had low epinephrine levels. And it makes sense because people with AC tend to have a poor way of managing their stress. And this is probably one of the biggest reasons why. And typically, we got to use different supplementation, but also using stress management techniques to help lower that will actually help improve epinephrine levels. Okay. Now, another big one. This is probably the biggest one. This is the one that surprised me the most. Most people think that dopamine is the main culprit and problem when it comes to ADHD. But I'm here to tell you, it's not. I want you guys to put in the chat, how, what percentage do you think of people with ADHD that I did these tests on? Now I get the selective of my sample size. But why I want to put, put in the chat, how, what percentage do you think of people that I ran these tests on actually had low dopamine levels? Go and put that in the chat. Putting that in, in, in there. All right. So what it was, drum roll here, 48%. Still a lot, but not as much as like epinephrine, phenylethylamine, that never even are talked about. Dopamine talked about a lot. But 48%, okay, of people that I ran these tests on were actually low in dopamine. So it's not always the problem. It's only about 48% of the problem for 48% of the people that I was working with and have been working with, okay? So, but the other thing is, what about if it's elevated? People don't think about this. They think it's always just a low dopamine situation, but 
I've also seen it from running these tests over several years, running thousands of tests, all my ADC patients, that I also will see it elevated. It's not a huge percentage, but it is still 10%. Because when you have elevated dopamine levels, you also will feel very anxious, stress. You'll have heart palpitations, issues. And this is where a lot of times, maybe the medication, whoops, the medication is making things worse because of this. This is where you got to be really careful, especially if you're like on antidepressants. I told you that 20% of people will have elevated serotonin levels and 10% will have from just my experience. Okay. So this is why it's so important to look at lab tests to see what you are truly deficient on because treatment is going to be different for each person. And these percentages are all over the place, but it definitely gives you a clear picture. Hopefully this was eye-opening as it was just as much as it was for me. And so if you would like me to actually order these lab tests for you and actually help you find the root cause of your ECG symptoms, I'd love to help you out. All you got to do is just book a focus strategy session with me. It's a 45 minute one on one personalized strategy session. You can click that link in the description below, find out the details. You can purchase and book that appointment and hope to help you out. Thank you guys so much for attending, and I'll see you guys in the inside to hopefully help you with your ADHD situation. Thanks. Bye.